Today I'm going to be talking about Nina Tanda, a woman in science who is truly a girl boss. Dr. Tandon was born in 1980 and grew up on Roosevelt Island in New York City along with her siblings. She has one brother and two sisters who were very impactful in her journey to science. Growing up, Dr. Tandon has always been interested in science. However, it was her siblings' health conditions that got her curiosity rolling. She had a colorblind and a nightblind sibling, which initially sparked her interest in science. She was specifically interested in the electrical currents that underlie the nervous system. Her main obstacle was being a woman in the science field. Dr. Tandon first got her bachelor's in electrical engineering from Cooper Union and went on to get her master's in bioelectrical engineering from MIT. And she continued her education to obtain her PhD in biomedical engineering and an MBA, which is a master's of business administration, both from Columbia University. According to Columbia's Graduate Student Affairs, outside of science, Dr. Tana enjoys running marathons, yoga, and making her own jewelry. Dr. Tandon has many admirable qualities, one of them being she's an advocate for women in the science field through her impactful TED Talks. I also admire her curiosity which stemmed from the health conditions of her siblings because, like me, my interest in science also sparked from my siblings' health conditions. She also has a lot of perseverance in obtaining the many degrees that she did, which inspires me a lot. Dr. Tandon focuses on tissue engineering and questions like how to grow bone or can you grow a human bone outside the human body, according to a video by Ted Ed. She's also the co-founder of the company EpiBone, which is a skeletal reconstruction company. Dr. Tandon's most recent work was published in 2018 where she addressed the live imaging of stem cells in germarium of the dorsophila ovary using a reusable gas permeable imaging chamber. In this paper, the authors, including Dr. Tannen, investigated how to create a chamber that allowed longer live imaging of the focal stem cells, or FSCs. They develop a reusable chamber made out of silicone attached to a glass cover slip. The chamber provided nutrients and allowed gas exchange without any media evaporation. As for the purpose, live imaging in the germarium can be useful in a few ways. One of them is to examine the cell cycle and asymmetric segregation of the germline stem cells. Another one is to observe the interaction between niche support cells and stem cells. And lastly, the behavior of FSCs within the niche could be studied. Tandon and the other researchers predicted that the muscle sheath played a role in the imaging time. So in this experiment, the removal of the muscle sheath, which usually occurs, did not take place, which in the end resulted in a longer imaging time as predicted. This figure here is from the paper that was just discussed. As shown, the germarium without a remaining sheath did not last long for productive use. Instead, the germariums with sheath is improved and showed longer useful imaging time, which is what Tandon and other researchers hypothesized. Dr. Tandon has done a lot in the science community, one of them being she has grown cells on rat hearts, but for the future, her ultimate goal is to find a way for human organs to be developed and grown. Thank you for watching my presentation on Nina Tandon, a brilliant woman in science.